So I've been five days out here. Five days out here waiting to see this? Yes, between last weekend and this weekend. Was it worth it? It absolutely was. Yes, when it... Yeah. In this video, we'll take you through the story of how we saw Steamboat, the largest active geyser in the world. On the way, we'll explain a little bit about how geysers work, and whether or not we can predict a future eruption of Steamboat. On June 3, 2018, we stopped by the Norris Geyser Basin, and we were quite surprised to see a large group of people sitting on the Steamboat viewing platforms. We asked if Steamboat was expected to erupt soon, and several people told us that they hoped it would, but this was Steamboat, so who knew? Steamboat is not a predictable geyser. It erupted 18 times in 1965, and over the next couple years it had between 3 and 6 eruptions a year. Then it was quiet for almost a decade before entering another burst of activity in the early 1980s, where it had 40 eruptions in 3 years. The next 32 years were relatively quiet, and then, in March of 2018, Steamboat erupted, and it has continued to erupt regularly since then. Steamboat has a north vent and a south vent, both of which have frequent minor eruptions. The gazers who were watching this geyser got quite excited any time both vents erupted simultaneously or spouted water vertically rather than at an angle. We also saw several outpourings of water where the stream coming down from the geyser suddenly sounded more like a waterfall. So that's a lot more water coming down. These two signs, strong minor eruptions and outpourings of water, are the only sure indications of an upcoming eruption. We watched the geyser until dusk and enjoyed the sound of my favorite bird call as we walked back to the parking lot. Then we came back early the next morning. Because the air was cold, the steam was much more visible after watching for a couple hours, we could see that the minor eruptions and outpourings of water were definitely increasing in size. And then it happened. The minor eruptions grew and grew until you couldn't tell the difference between the north and the south vent, and it was fully erupting. I watched that initial eruption from the boardwalk down in the basin while Math Dad filmed from up on the platform. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. We're up for hundreds of feet. Dad, are you getting the video? Get the video, yeah. Yeah. It was quite simply one of the most awesome things we've witnessed in our entire lives. Steamboat is the largest active geyser in the entire world. Full-grown lodgepole pines are about 25 meters or 80 feet tall, and Steamboat was sending water well over 100 meters into the air. Holy oh, You don't know how lucky you are. The water phase of its eruption lasted a solid 30 minutes. It was powerful, beautiful, and it just roared and roared. Being with a crowd of dedicated geyser enthusiasts made the experience all the more wonderful. There was a tangible feeling of excitement and joy in the air. And now, the big question, if you are going to Yellowstone National Park this summer, will you be able to see Steamboat erupt? You might look at the history of eruptions and notice that Steamboat tends to have alternating patterns of busy and quiet periods. Perhaps the nine eruptions of 2018 are the beginning of another large cluster of dozens upon dozens of eruptions. The last seven eruptions in particular have been very regular, each coming about a week apart. Does this mean Steamboat will erupt again next week? Well, Steamboat is a geyser, and geysers remain somewhat mysterious. We know the basics of how most of them work. Magma deep underground heats water, and at some point along the path of this water there is a choke point, a place where bubbles can get trapped either by a narrow crack or in a jumble of boulders. 
The water and gas then become superheated until they can no longer exist in that confined space. They have to expand. And when they do, they expand upward, shooting water and steam out of the geyser vent. Geysers have four phases. The pre-play phase, where the gas trapped in the choke point is starting to break free. That's when you start to see increased minor eruptions. And then the actual eruption consists of the water phase, where the trapped gas is pushing out the water that was on top of it, followed by the steam phase. If you're thinking that it doesn't seem likely that bubbles in a relatively small choke point could force that much water and gas out of a vent, then you need to remember just how explosive superheated liquids can be. When trapped gas or liquid is superheated and the pressure is suddenly released, the volume can expand by more than a thousand times. That means that something as small as this little red square would instantly grow to fill the entire blue volume. A small choke point can produce a big effect above ground. After the eruption is over, the geyser enters the recharge phase where the chambers within the geyser refill with water and then the bubble trap refills with gas. Why does the recharge phase for steamboat geyser sometimes last as long as 50 years and other times last as short as four days? Why does the nearby cistern spring sometimes drain completely when steamboat erupts? We really don't know. The only constant with thermohydraulic features is change. New springs and vents are being formed in Yellowstone all the time, even popping up in parking lots. A minor earthquake tomorrow could shift the underground structure of steamboat, causing it to become dormant forever, or to erupt continuously without pause. There are no guarantees or firm predictions in place. Which is why so many of the people we met had been waiting for days to see Steamboat. How long did you wait for this? So, 27 hours. 27 hours. Was it worth it? Oh, more. I'd wait another 27. <laughs> I would also be happy to sit for a day to see Steamboat again. It's an experience worth waiting for. Oh, <laughs>